All right. Hey, everyone. Dr. Frunke here with another episode of Knife Surgery Live. And tonight, tonight we're going to have some fun because I'm going to make this a bit challenging for myself because I'm going to be taking apart this Spyderco Para 3. Uh, if you guys follow my channel, you will probably know that a while ago... How's it going, guys? Welcome, welcome. Just getting things started here. If you follow my channel, you'll probably know that uh, I recently did a scale swap on my Paramilitary 2. This is the Blade HQ Edition M4 uh, Paramilitary 2. And I got these awesome scales from uh, a Russian guy. He goes by Aramis Akhmadov. He's on uh, Instagram, and that's where I found his stuff. I actually put a poll out to the community, and a few guys answered saying that he makes the coolest scales. And in my opinion, these are the nicest scales for any paramilitary two uh, out there. So uh, what we are going to be doing tonight is actually putting some brand new Aramis, Aramis Akhmadov scales on the Para 3. So he just came out uh, with these scales. They just came out. So uh, another little interesting thing. Um, on his paramilitary two scales, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this. He has a milled pocket so that only really the standard Spyderco clip or a clip that is rounded. Let me see if I can close this so I don't stab myself on camera. If you can see that area right there next to the uh, lanyard tube, how it's milled out, and it really only accepts a rounded uh, clip. And so that's okay on the para two. Uh, still shows a little bit of the knife, but that's okay because it's over there. But on the para, para 3, that's going to be completely unacceptable. So uh, he had it designed that way, but I asked him to raise that and make it flat so that I could put a deep carry clip on it because, uh, in my opinion, the Para 3 is basically uncarryable without a deep carry clip. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it, guys. I have all the stuff nicely laid out here, really just for the picture. Uh, so this is going to be our... Our goal right here, our finished project, let me put that up here. This is what our goal is going to be, so we're going to work towards that with this guy right here. So I've already put on uh, this deep carry lynch clip right here, uh, and so that's going to have to come off first. This is a little bit difficult to put on in and of itself, so uh, let's go ahead and get the right bits out here. This is a T6. I'll need that one for the clip and everything. Uh, and I think I'll need a T8 as well, and then I think I need a T10 as well for the uh, pivot there. So that's a 15. There's the 10. Okay, so we've got our bits ready. Let's go ahead and try to take this off. So uh, this is going to be a bit challenging, and I guarantee you there are going to be moments during this video where I curse or I go silent because I'm going to be trying to focus on this, and it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I'm especially nervous about the lanyard tube. Uh, for anybody who has uh, ever worked on a Spyderco knife like this with one of their pinned lanyard tubes like this, their fixed lanyard tubes, you know that that is a nightmare situation. Just getting this clip off is not an easy thing, and then I have to talk on top of it. So there we go. That's another part of this that I'm a little bit nervous about is actually getting this clip with the right screws on it because uh, the standard length screws may not work. And so I've ordered three different sets of screws. So got that part off. So we're going to go ahead and switch. And I'm sorry for not responding to any of the comments. I welcome all of you guys. There are 37 of you in here right now. I really appreciate each and every one of you for being here. I will get to a Q&A session towards the end of the video. But for now, I'm going to focus on just taking this knife apart so that we can see what these new scales are all about. Uh, this knife did come with a small amount of what I presume to be blue Loctite. And uh, I'd already taken it down once just for a regular sort of uh, maintenance and lubrication that I do on any brand new knife that comes my way. And so I definitely did that. So here we are faced with problem number one. The fact that that lanyard tube is pinned and so is the, uh, so is the stop pin right here. So you have to bend this enough for it to come up and not oh geez this is really going to be difficult isn't it okay so what we're going to do is this come to the other side take these screws out we're going to make it all loosey-goosey spider coat does use typically high quality screws 
that will come out with standard sort of techniques usually so here we go we've got a bit of a problem here this one doesn't want to come out i have not removed this one before <clears throat> so let's see if we can torque driver it out oh the joys of disassembling a spyderco knife live very much fun i'm sure for everybody to watch so um do you guys have a spyderco pair of three if so, what is your favorite pair of three and why? Have you guys gotten some of the newer ones? What I'm going to have to do is counter torque this guy on the other side. There we go. Yep, that is the technique for taking apart a spider co. Okay, that worked. <laughs> these are not the easiest knives. That's why I like doing these videos live so that you guys can see how I struggle with it because I think everyone is going to struggle with this. I don't care how long you've been to knives. Taking apart one of these paras is a daunting task. Now, I don't think it's quite as annoying as, say, taking apart like a Delica. Those knives are really annoying with their springs and everything. But uh, these are not easy knives to disassemble, not by any means. So there, all the screws are out. We're going to try to shimmy this thing open one way or the other. There we go. <clears throat> so that opened. Don't get cut by this incredibly sharp blade. So this is how you do most of the maintenance on these paras. They just kind of scissor open like this. The pivot is a bushing style pivot, so it's going to sit right there. Get the washers out. So here comes the hardest part of this disassembly, and it's everyone's, everyone's least favorite part. And uh, to be honest, I've not prepared for this in any meaningful way. There is the uh, spacer right there. So we're just going to hope for the best. I'm going to try to do this like this, and we're going to see how it goes. Sometimes if you just kind of wiggle them, one side will come free, and the other one will just be stuck. And then we're going to have to figure that part out. So, yeah, if you just kind of move them back and forth and pull and twist, eventually it should kind of come loose. A little bit of back and forth rocking motions. Yeah, one side is coming loose here a bit. So uh, this is the worst part, guys. You know this. Everyone fears this part. And this is the part that I was worried about doing live. But it's coming apart. If you just keep doing this up and down, side to side, up and down. Uh, all right, it's coming. It's coming. Now, there are some other solutions that people have uh, suggested to me that I can uh, try here. Uh, if you guys want to just shout out any comments on how to take apart the lanyard tube easily, I'm welcome to doing that now. So let's get these pieces out. Stop pin right there. Yep. Welcome to ideas because this is always so crappy. Okay. Someone said jamming this in there using circular motions maybe that'll be for the second part <clears throat> well the problem is someone wants to buy these scales and so I need to not break them as I'm taking this apart <sighs> using lots of force all right pry them apart with a flathead if you had a table vise yeah that would help some of those things would help how goes the struggle? I found that squirting a bunch of oil all around the tube area helped to get it out of the other side. Yeah, hammering it through is probably what I'm about to have to do here. That's how I did it the last time. So that's what I think I'm going to do this time. So here we go. Hammer time. Brought that over here. Uh, I'm not going to do it on this table because that will just create a lot of problems. So I'm going to do it over here, guys. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Ah, uh, gonna have to pry it apart. Gonna have to pry it apart. Here's a flat head. I'm gonna use this. Oh man. I also don't want to injure myself, which is a distinct possibility with these ridiculous knives and how they work. 
Okay, there we go. Making progress there. Just kind of wedge something kind of inside the scales. I'm just going to spend minutes and minutes and minutes trying to get this apart, and we'll see if it works. This is very difficult, always. I don't know how anyone really does this and enjoys it, but that's kind of why I did this video, because everyone knew it was going to be a pain. All right, that's coming. <clears throat> why do they make these so difficult? That's my question. Can they redesign this so that it's not like this anymore? There are a lot of people in here now watching the struggle. This is not easy and not enjoyable. But it is coming out. Kind of the back and forth seems to be the real winner on this one. All right, some more of that, some more of that. Uh-huh. Come on now. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Do the real heavy bends. Yeah, look at that. That's interesting how these are fit into that frame there. They're pressed into the G10 as much as they're pressed into the steel frame. That's an interesting thing right there. All right, let's see about getting this one out now. Uh, yep, yeah. this one is going to take the screwdriver going in like this. Yep, yeah, there it is. All right, see? That wasn't so terrible. So that's how that's how it's fixed into the frame there. That only took me about 10 minutes. There we go. So that is not going to be a problem anymore because I have a solution to that. We're going to get rid of this. Let's take this off completely like this. Come out. Nobody wants this. <laughs> Man, this thing stinks. It really doesn't want to come out. But this frame makes it a little bit easier to pop it out like that. And it didn't break the G10 scale, so we're in luck. That's very good. Let's go ahead and get this side out of the G10. Just kind of pry it out here. Yep. No part of this disassembly is easy or fun. So we are getting to it though. They like to make every single stage of this difficult. But if that just goes to show you the tight tolerances that are going on at the Spyderco factory, honestly, these pair of twos and pair of threes are as well made as any of these higher end knives. It's just sort of a lower end sort of spectrum. So, all right. Uh, there we go. There it is. All right. Now we have the frames off. So G10 scales off. These are sold, guys. So thanks for asking. Uh, my friend Justin out there, he went ahead and uh, offered to purchase these when he saw the post earlier. As you see, Justin, these came apart cleanly. There are no breaks anywhere. I know I had to pry on them a bit, but uh, they should work perfectly uh, with some standard stuff. So what we're going to do now is set the G10 aside. And we are going to move all of this black hardware. I need this pin. I need this pin. All right, the body screws, the pivot screws, all that stuff is going to go away. The clip screws we need to get rid of. That's going to be a pain. These lynch clips, the way that these lynch clips work is that you have to put these screws in like that, but the screws don't want to come out. And they're very difficult to get in there. You almost have to screw them into the clip itself for them to work. And so I'm going to try to get these out, but it's going to be painful. Each one of these is going to have to be unscrewed out of there. There we go. Ah, the joys of doing things live. So if I knew how to edit videos better, I probably wouldn't have to do this live. But I'm just not good at editing videos when I don't have the time for it. So I don't have the time to make this for an hour and a half and then uh, go and edit it and stuff. So I'd rather just sit down and do it for an hour and a half and then be done with it. So I'm sorry if it's boring. 
but we are going to get through this. We'll figure that out in a minute. We're going to get to that at the end. What I'm going to do is make some progress, some concrete progress here with the knife. So get these pieces. As always, Aramis's pieces fit beautifully. Let's take a look at the scales right here. Uh, they are carbon fiber. As you can see, there is a milled pattern that he calls his grand line pattern. And uh, I really do like that very much. It says plus grand on the inside. And uh, on the other side, it says made by Aramis. Aramis Akhmadov makes these scales. Someone just asked. All right. Let us see about putting this knife back together. Uh, we're going to have to figure out that clip situation at the end of this video because that is going to be painful. All right. We've got this. Now, I've got all this blue hardware from Blades We Love. I will provide a link when I finally get this video uploaded and everything. Uh, Steve over there at Blades We Love has always helped me out to get the hardware and stuff that I need for these builds. Uh, and if you just ask him, he should be able to provide that for you as well. Uh, tell him that Frunky sent you, and uh, maybe he'll give you a discount. We'll see. Probably not. Uh, let's see. I need this because we are going to be putting together this pivot. All right. The bushing pivot makes it relatively easy to uh, put this knife together and take it apart without affecting the action terribly. Uh, they did fix that by using a, uh, a non-fixed stop pin right there. So that does make it a little bit easier. There we go. I think this is keyed on one side. No, not on this side. Makes it easier. Okay. I need to start it with the other side then. Putting the frames back together. I'm going to start with the keyed side so that it is all lined up. And by keyed, I mean that there is a, like a D shape on the pivot itself. You don't need to put lube between the washer and the frame. You need to put lube between the washer and the blade tang. And so there already is a little bit. I'll put just a tiny bit more. Again, for washer systems, you really don't need a lot of lube. Just the tiniest amount on the pivot. All right, and so I have received these blue pivot screws. So we're going to try to put this together here. This is going to take a 10. I'm going to do that. There we go. Perfect. Fixed in place. Ready to go. Let's put the stop pin in. Press fits right into place. Again, well done, Aramis. Get the blade on there. Okay, guys. Now we're making some progress. So, uh, another thing that I really enjoy is the... Uh, uh, let's not put the blade on just yet, actually. Let's put the stop pin or the backspacer piece on with one of these body screws. This is a T8, so that just swaps right out. This Blades We Love hardware is really high quality stuff. I've always really liked using it. I've always been very impressed with the quality. All right, there we go. That fits right on there. Stop pin fell out. All right, there we go. Uh, there's already a little bit of lube on there, but you know, I always like to have a little bit more. Just put a tiny bit on there. Throw the washers on. Sorry, I'm not looking at the comments, guys. I appreciate that there are 75 of you in here watching me be an idiot. And doing this so that's good right there what I'm gonna do next is slide in this stop pin ooh that looks nice slide on this very cool looking backspacer that's gonna just have to sit I think like that yeah, oh yeah oh that fits so well this is gonna be cool 
All right, and then we're gonna just slide this guy back together. This uh, this tube is purposefully undersized, so it makes it actually very easy to reassemble the knife and then disassemble it later. Oh, that backspacer is very cool. All right, so we are coming back together. I'll get a uh, pivot screw in gently. Not obviously not tightened down all the way, but in enough to hold some pressure. Always uh, tighten your screws kind of sequentially. Don't all do them. Don't do them all at the same time. All right. You want them to sort of tighten down slowly, equal amounts of pressure all around. Uh, and sometimes you can make some adjustments. Like right now, I'm going to elevate this back spacer a little bit to see if I can get it in line. Yep, with the scales a bit more. That's better. Maybe something like that. And then we can lock it down with our screws here. So that's what I'm saying about tightening sequentially. So he's got good quality titanium hardware. You can really cinch down on those things, even though I'm using a steel uh, screwdriver. My fear of damaging this stuff is zero because it's uh, I've, I've used it a lot and it's very good. All right. So there we go. Pivot is tightened. Uh, overly tightened. That's okay. That's kind of where I want it. So I can back it off just a hair on both sides. Just down to finger tightness now. Still too tight, but look at this. Look at this. That is already coming together. So happy with the progress that I've made. It's taken me 21 minutes to get here. 75 of you guys are watching, and I do appreciate every second that you spend with me here. This is looking awesome, though. Uh, this fine-tuning stuff just comes down to a little bit of luck and some Loctite. Uh, I'll just do kind of loose finger tightness on both sides here. Yeah, there we go. That's in the pivot. There it goes. Yeah, and once that uh, once that lube kind of settles in, yep, yep, that's nice, guys. That's really nice. So there you have it, guys. We're coming together here with the Aramis Akhmadov scales, looking awesome on the black M4 DLC. Definitely a huge fan of these scales. I will say Aramis is a good guy, uh, and he's very easy to work with. For those of you that have uh, gotten to work with him in the past, you will uh, definitely know that as well. That he's a good guy to work with and easy to communicate with. Even though he's Russian, he speaks fluent English, and he will answer your questions. So let's try to get this clip on, because that was the whole point of me waiting to get these was to get those so that I could put a deep carry clip on it. Now I just really need to get these screws out of here. And I'm not sure the easiest way to do that. Probably this way, but I don't want to mess up my clip, which I just did. Yep, I just put a mark on it. Ah, oh, man. That's a pain in the ass. Okay, well. Man, they do not want these clips to be uh, used, do they? Hmm. I don't know how to get that screw off. Let's just see if the screws work. If the screws work, then we're in business. If not, I'll figure it out later. All right, let's see here. Might have to use longer screws because of how deep these are, so that was the whole point. But uh, I may just have to struggle with that off the camera, guys. I'm not sure how I'm going to get this off without damaging this live. But I did want to get those scales put on. I did want to talk about some other things. This clip is going to have to be done off the camera. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that without damaging that further. So let's take a good look at the Para 3 Grand Line scales now available from our good friend Aramis. Definitely awesome. Backspacers installed. Blue hardware from blades we love this one has been green anodized by my buddy fanatic edge i may keep this one blue just to have a little bit of some uh variation in my life so uh that was fun uh let's do a couple of things for a channel update while we're at it okay so uh i've gotten some neat knives in recently here's one right here let's do some uh let's do some talks now let's do some questions i'm going to show off some of the other knives i just wanted to do a bit of a showcase 
because I've done some 10 minute videos on some great knives that have come through and I don't think 10 minutes is long enough. So uh, let's see, let's see. Take a look at this guy. We got the SM100 Warfighter. What do you guys think of this one? This is a very beautiful knife. This backspacer gets me every time. Definitely been on a Robert Carter kick recently. Had the BBM, Custom Tech, got the Talon, and then I got this guy. I am thinking that there are probably some more Carters in my future, and we will see what I come up with. Which one is your favorite, guys? Let me know. Uh, let's see. I can bring out the Talon. This guy, this is maybe my most favorite custom knife I've ever gotten. What's the most expensive knife? knife you would EDC. Uh, well, I EDC this one. It's pretty expensive. This is the knife that, uh, the most expensive knife that I do EDC. I can put it that way. It's the most expensive knife in my collection and I do EDC it. So if that answers your question, basically I EDC, I carry all of my knives. So it basically if I have it, it gets carried and it doesn't matter what the price is because it's still a thing. At the end of the day, it's just an item. What is happening, EDC Arizona? Have I ever gotten into Bally songs? No. Uh, I am a surgeon, and I need to keep my fingers. Uh, I have a Band-Aid on my finger just because I actually had a small infection on my fingertip right there, and so it was not looking right, so I have a Band-Aid on there. So, uh, questions, guys. Any questions? I think um, I've got a bunch of knives here that I want to show you because these are going to be some amazing videos coming up. Check this thing out. This is unbelievable. I had a live cast uh, a few weeks ago where this knife had a little snafu on camera, but I can finally show you this David Kulis Spectre. Crazy, crazy knife with this Turkish twist Damascus backspacer, marbled carbon fiber, and copper. Crazy, crazy, crazy. What's the coolest surgery you've done so far? Uh, well, I took out a giant brain tumor on a young woman, uh, last week. That was pretty awesome. I think that was one of the most kind of excellent surgeries I've done. Let's see here. This is a knife that has not gotten enough camera time, but got a whole lot of love on Instagram this week. That is the Scott Cook Loxa. I call it the Loxa. I don't think that's how it's pronounced, but that's what I'm calling it. This thing is absolutely beautiful. It has this crazy hornet's nest, Damascus steel, a 14 karat gold thumb stud. You heard that right. Mother of pearl pivot uh, cap, Damascus inlays, bronze anodized pockets right there, stippling everywhere, bead blasted, hand rub satin, stippled, different finishes, chamfers, beautiful detail work. This knife is incredible and one of the most uh, epic integrals I've ever seen. Somebody asked uh, about what's new in the integral world. Well, nothing is particularly new. I've done some videos on the uh, the new Wii knives, on the on the new Riot Jack, but I'm taking it back to the old school here, showing you the original integral here. This is a very special knife that's going to get a very special video. Uh, coming out sometime soon. Someone said this looks like it has a Nike swoosh on it. That's going to start some political conversations that are not within the scope of this video right now. Next up, I've got the Michael Raymond Starlet. This is an amazing, amazing knife. All three of these crazy knives are thanks to my good buddy Anchor. He goes by Shy Timber on Instagram. Very cool guy. Something that just came in today that I think was really special actually came in this case right here. I've got a brand new servo to show you guys. This is not my knife, but uh, my good buddy Craig, a.k.a. Craig Brown of Brown Knives, sent me a new servo to check out because I had spoken to him uh, about a couple of small issues that my servo has, and uh, he said all of those things have been fixed on the new models and so let me send you one to check out and man has he delivered here this is a totally different knife than the knife that I have now I own number 13 uh, let me pull it out here actually right here is number 13 and I think this is number like 75 or 76 so in the next 60 knives 
he has honed his craft. He's developed this awesome, these awesome new milling patterns, a new pivot, new screw. He now comes with the hardware. He standardized the over-travel disc. He's changed the pocket clip. He's added more milling options to the backspacer and everything. And now he's offering these new blade shapes as well. This is the new drop point blade shape with a different plunge grind. It's just a different knife altogether. It feels altogether different as well. It is not quite as fast. Maybe it will be once it breaks in. I think it will be once it breaks in. But uh, it's got more of a secure feeling. I don't know how to describe it. It's got lock up like a Shirogorov, where it has just that perfect amount of uh, friction right there. And uh, so, yeah. Have you checked out Scorpion 6 Custom Knives? Um, I will just leave it at the statement that I am in no way interested in uh, Scorpion 6 Knives. I just saw that comment. Uh, definitely not. Definitely just not not a thing that because they're not knives. They're not even remotely like resembling knives. They're they're not knives. Moving on, next topic. Uh, I like the new blade. Just another combat knife. The jack. Uh, so I have this guy sitting here. I have uh, I really want to do a giveaway soon. I've got a whole pile of uh, stuff that I want to give away. Uh, and I'm going to do that here soon. My birthday is coming up next week. And so uh, instead of me getting a gift, I'm going to give away some gifts. I've got some free knives. I've got uh, this BRS Evolve series right here, the Minuteman. This is a neat little knife right here. Kind of a cool thing. Very fast, very smooth, nice little knife. Going to be given away. I'm going to give away uh, this Ontario Carter Trinity. Yep, I still have this guy. This is still in pretty good... Uh, repair right here in good shape i see they've been pushing this knife on their instagram this week uh i'm gonna give away some other things too i got a couple of other things laying around guys and we're gonna we're gonna make it happen uh i just wanted to kind of make it uh, a short video where i showed how i sort of take apart a pair of three it's never easy it's never fun and the work is actually still not done i gotta put this clip on here somehow without damaging it more so I appreciate you guys watching. This is just going to be a quick video. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by and checking it out. And uh, I will talk to you on the next live video. Thank you, guys. Take care.